Hi there, it's Margaret Chisholm here from Port Credit, and today I'm starting a 30-day Facebook Live challenge. And I think it's pretty dark in this room, so I'm just going to run and turn on a light. Okay, hopefully that's better. So yeah, today I'm starting a 30-day Facebook Live challenge because number one, it's a challenge that was set up by my team and also because I want to increase my Facebook reach organically and I do get tired of just going on and posting because often what happens is I'll go on Facebook to post something and the next thing you know, the day is gone because all I've done is scroll. I love scrolling because scrolling, then I don't have to do too much. So doing Facebook Lives for me, again, just because of the challenge, but it is going to change things up and that's a, always a good thing. It can be a good thing. So join me if you're new at doing Facebook Lives, you've never done them before, you want to do them, or like myself, you just want to get back in the game because I used to do Facebook Lives. I have not done Facebook Lives for a year and a half. So in order to just get back in the game and do it properly, let's just start at the beginning. And yes, for the first few days, I can promise you, maybe even a week, that you'll catch me reading some of my notes and some of my scripts. So just so you know, Facebook Live is one of the most exciting and engaging ways that you can connect with your audience. It's not only a great way for people to know what you're up to in real time, but it also gives them an opportunity to engage with you more closely than ever before. Much more interesting than just typing posts back and forth. So if this sounds like something that interests you, stick around and I'll share everything that there is that I've you know, gone back and I mean, I kind of knew it before when I was doing Facebook lives, but I just, I had to go back and, you know, just go over some of the tips and tricks about how Facebook lives work. So number one, you want to create talking points and a call to action. You need to decide what is the purpose of doing a Facebook live. I mean, you can do a Facebook live to connect with your friends. That's fine. But if you're doing it for a business reason, to grow your business, or if you're just starting a business, you really want to know why you're doing it. And again, for me today, like I said at the beginning, I'm accepting a challenge from my team to do 30 days of lives. And yeah, it's really daunting. Like this is totally out of my comfort zone, even though I used to do them before. But I need to jump in, get out of my comfort zone because I've seen how well it works for people that are doing it. And I have to remember to be looking up at the camera and not in the middle of the uh, camera. Because if I look in the middle of the camera, I'm not really connecting with you. But if I look at the camera eye, it's a better way to connect with people directly. So some of the ways of the reasons for doing the Facebook lives, especially for business, is you give people a look at behind the scenes. You can show off new products, um, do an unboxing. It's a great way when if you have products to sell, it's a great way to show people what you're excited about when you get your products delivered to you. You can make an announcement. So again, it's not just about business. It's much easier and it's much more fun if you're talking to family members to do it live because you can connect with them on a right there basis. 
you can live stream an event. You can interview someone or two people. You know, if you have people in your team that are succeeding or if you know someone else that's a great leader and you want to bring in, them in to connect with your team, it's a great way to interview people. It's a great way to try and question and answer. Hi, I'm not sure who's there, but I see somebody's there. Just wanted to say hello. Where are you uh, checking in from? You can talk about books that you've read. You can talk about movies that you've seen. You can talk about places you visited. There's so many things to do on a Facebook Live. I'm amazed that more people aren't doing them, myself included. So whatever you decide to focus on, you want to create a list of topics that you want to cover and questions that you'd like to ask so that you're not under pressure to think about something to talk about on the fly. So I'm inviting you to post questions, whether you're on live or you come on a replay, just ask about doing Facebook Lives and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. If you're just starting out or if you're restarting and you need kind of a kickstart, I'm happy to help. And you'll all be on the journey with me as I start. Oh, hi, Ken. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining me. And I hope you enjoy what I'm offering. Uh, how's everything up there in Barrie? So again, if you want to stick around after the video, love to have you and have a chat with you. So you also want to be able to share a link with them to tell them what you want them to do next. Do you want them to register for something? Do you want them to attend an event that you're holding? Do you want to, hey Brady, how are you? I'm just talking about why I'm doing the Facebook Live today and why people really want to do Facebook Lives. So thanks for joining us. So again, if you um, you you want to register for you want the people to register for something, you want them to read something. I mean, maybe you've read a great business book and you want to share it. You want to check out your website. Do you want these people to check out your website? I have a website where you can actually hashtag Ask Me Anything, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. So if you have a website, do a hashtag, ask me anything. Or maybe you just want to make a comment about this live stream that I'm doing today. Second thing that you want to be aware of is you want to pick a location for your broadcast. You want to give your audience an interesting setting to look at during the broadcast. It could be in your store. It could be in your office. So I actually needed to change my office up a little bit today because I'm restarting them. And I, I just didn't want people to see my messy, generally messy office. So I just kind of needed to change it up a bit. So you can do, it doesn't take a lot, just a little bit. So perhaps you're having an event in the background. Maybe you're at a live event and you want to be able to um, just have a great backdrop. You want to make sure the location is well lit, which is why I ran away and turned on my light. And you want to make sure it's quiet because you really want people to hear you and to see you clearly. Now, Facebook makes a couple of recommendations. Before you start, make sure your Wi-Fi signal is strong. Now, some, pl some places in my home, where my office is, the Wi-Fi signal is not strong. So if you're going to do a Wi-Fi there, uh, sorry, if you're going to do a broadcast there, you want to make sure that you're in the best location and that your Wi-Fi is strong because there's nothing worse than doing a broadcast or a live and having it drop out. So one thing that you can use just to make sure that your Wi-Fi signal and your 4G connection is strong is use a tool like speed test Net. Number three, you want to check and choose proper broadcasting equipment. So right now, Facebook allows business pages to run live, uh, your personal page, which is what I'm using right now. You can use it on your phone, 
which I'm using. You can use it on a tablet or a desktop. And it's easy to broadcast from all these devices, but you want to choose one over the other for certain circumstances based on where you're broadcasting from or what you're doing with the live. So, I mean, if you're doing a live and you want to move around, obviously you don't want to be tied to a laptop. You want to have the phone in your hand so that you can walk around where you are, show people what you're doing, uh, perhaps um, interview people. If it's a live event, you want to interview people. If you're at a um, business seminar, you want to be able to talk to some of the speakers and ha <coughs> have them share what they talked about, maybe go into it a little bit deeper. So just depending on what you're doing. Uh, if you're going to be sitting here uh, in one location, then it's good just to use a tablet or your laptop. One thing you want to make sure if you're, whatever device you're using, one thing you want to make sure is that you have a really good microphone. So either, I mean, if the microphone on your um, tablet or your phone or your laptop is good, that's great. Otherwise, go out and get yourself a really good microphone. Number four, you want to do a dry run. You don't want to just go on air. You want to be comfortable with what you're talking about. Um, for me, I mean, it's stressful enough for me right now, today, uh, doing this because I'm just not used to doing it anymore. But you don't want to be at a loss at, oh my gosh, where am I? What am I saying? What am I, what was I talking about even? So do a practice run. It really will make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Then, um, yeah, and just, just to let you know that when I first started like a year and a half ago when I was doing them, when I first started, I, I would like, oh, I don't need to do a dry run. I just want to be natural. I just want it to come from my heart. Well, you know what happens? You end up forgetting what you're talking about because people are coming on and watching and you you want to remember to say hello to them and then the next thing you know you totally space out and if you're anything like me and you space out you kind of get all fidgety and embarrassed and you end up ending the live before you wanted to and it kind of it just puts you in a position or at least it would put me and it did put me in a position where I kind of oh I got embarrassed and then it took me twice as long to do the next slide so just be sure and do a practice run and you can always and I've done this you can always do a live private or just sent out to a few people look at it when you're finished and if it's up to your standards, then you can actually send it out public. But again, just do some lives because I've done that on a few occasions and I'm just gonna grab a drink of water. I've done that on a few occasions um, where I just put it on private. I look at it and I say, oh, that's pretty good. I think I'll do that. And the next thing you know, I just finish it and I put it on public. So Facebook does save the video to your account. You can review it and you can make any changes that you have to make. Even if you have to do the whole thing again, go for it. Number five, you want to promote your Facebook Live beforehand. I did not do that today. I've yet to reach that level of comfort, but I'm positive by the end of the 30 days, I will be promoting my live on my Facebook page. Uh, in my emails. So you want to announce when you'll be going alive ahead of time. And if you have a great email list, do that. On your social uh, networks, you want to do that. So whether you're on TikTok or you're on LinkedIn, let people know. You want to uh, announce what it's going to be about and you want to give it a good title. You want to entice people to come and watch you because people come in and out very quickly. And, you know, everybody's time is precious. But if you want to have followers, you need to let them know what's happening and what they can expect. You can also include an image when you make um, an, an announcement. You can include images that will describe what you're doing. 
So yeah, just use a standard event invitation if you're gonna do that. Make sure you have a call to action to point readers to where the, the live is gonna be, what time it's gonna be, and again, make sure they know what to expect. Number six, you wanna give your broadcast a title. I, I just went over that, but when you click the live button, and I did do that, and then twice I canceled the live. So this time when I did the live, I didn't actually put the title in, but I am cognizant that you have to put the title there again, because you want people to know what it's about. <coughs> so when you click the live button on Facebook, the camera turns on and there's a space at the top where you can type in the title of your live. Just something to have people uh, know what the details that you're going to be talking about. And even if they're going to do um, come on the replay, they may not go on the replay if they can't see what it's about. Again, people are busy and they have lots of things to do. You can also schedule your live stream in advance. And so again, when you're scheduling in advance and announcing that it's going to be on, you want to make sure you have the title and the description. Number seven, we're getting close to the end, is pay attention to timing. You want to do your lives for at least 10 minutes. The longer your live, the more people are going to come on especially people that are already on Facebook or on the media stream, they'll see that you're there and they may share it with friends. Nothing nicer than having new people come on to meet you, to find out who you are, what you're all about and what you're doing. So you can have a clock or your smartphone timer on. Just make sure you're keeping track of the time. And guess what? You can go for up to four hours. I can't see me doing that anytime soon, but I'm sure as we get more comfortable doing it, we can talk longer and longer. And again, the longer we talk, the longer we're, as long as we're giving value. I mean, if you, you're just gonna start chit-chatting, you may not get the viewers, but give value, you can talk as long as you want. <coughs> Number eight, you wanna make sure that you are interacting with your audience. It makes them feel like they're part of the broadcast. And I know Brady's on again. I did say hi to Brady and he typed in there that it was a great topic. And I thank you for that, Brady, because, you know, when you're just starting out, you're never sure what you should be talking about. So I appreciate that comment. It's great. Facebook also shows you how many people are watching. Now, right now, there's one person on this live. Some people, they'll look at that and they'll say, oh my goodness, why am I wasting my time talking to this camera? One per oh, now I have two. Hello, whoever you are, where are you calling from? Where are you checking in from? Anyway, I mean, just don't worry about the numbers, even though they show you how many are watching you, don't pay any attention to that. Um, it does happen to be right up where the camera is, but if things like that bother you, just cover it up, don't pay any attention. You're doing this to build an audience. So don't pay attention to how many are watching you. Just acknowledge the people that are watching you. And again, ask people a nice break or question because people, you, can, you don't always know who's on, but if you ask people a question like, where are you calling from? If they answer you, you're going to see their name. And if you don't do it for the first few times, don't worry. I mean, I'm just giving you tips here. The biggest thing is just to get on and do it consistently. Whether you decide to do it for once a week, <coughs> once every two weeks, doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Again, I happen to be doing it for 30 days. I invite you to come along with me for the trip. It's going to be a great journey. We'll see what happens in 30 days if I keep going or not. But <coughs> you want to make sure that you let people acknowledge the people that are taking their time to watch you and to interact with you. And again, number nine, remind people during the live to what you're doing, what's happening. Now, I know if I had a few more people come on, I would remind them what this video is all about. Brady is on, he already knows what it's about, 
but if I had new people coming on, I would just let them know it's about the 20, the 30 day challenge. Come and join me. So just keep reminding new people what's going on. And just through that, you want to take the periodic breaks to greet people. I've talked about that before. Number 10, you want to organize and promote your Facebook Live videos. Facebook saves your broadcast, as I mentioned before, to your Facebook video tab. <coughs> and from there, you can create a playlist of all your lives so that it's easy for your fans to find them. It's easy for you to find them, to go back and review what you've done. And you'll be surprised. I mean, I know if I do this every day for 30 days, I am going to be shocked when I come back to this live, check it out and see how much I've improved. And I'm looking forward to that. And I see, oh, Christine, how are you? I'm glad to see you home and I hope everything's going well with you. Great to see you. So you want to promote your videos after the broadcast as well. You want to share your link to your Facebook page. You want to share it to, you, you know, even upload it to YouTube if you have a YouTube channel. You're looking to get your name out there and what you're doing. So video content is also popular with email subscribers. As I mentioned before, if you have an email list, let them know when you're doing a live, what it's about. And this is another reason why I'm doing a live. Honestly, all these social media is great, but you never know how long they're going to be around. YouTube is great. Facebook's great. Um, LinkedIn is great, but they're not your, they're not under your ownership. So if Facebook decides to go down or block you, <coughs> you don't have an email list. You don't have a business. And even if you're just, uh, you know, friends with a lot of people, if Facebook goes down, you have no way of communicating with those friends of yours. So build yourself an email list, even if you're not doing a business, because again, you don't own any of these platforms and if they're gone, so is your friends list and your business list. So include your videos in your emails when you're sending emails out. So if I can do this, you can do this. It may seem daunting, like I said at the beginning of this live, it's like, I mean, it took me all day to do this. So I finally decided, eh, I'm going to do it. What's the worst that's going to happen? Nothing is the worst. <coughs> oh, now I'm losing my voice. So I hope these 10 tips give you a bit of a head start. I'd love to have you on this journey with me. If you decide that you want to do a live every day for 30 days, connect with me and we'll go through this together. And I can't wait to show this to my team members to let them know that I've done the first day of 30 days. I am so excited and I'm excited to get more followers, organic followers on my Facebook page, hopefully to introduce them to my business at some point. So thanks for watching. I appreciate your time. Create your first live today or tomorrow and let us know or let me know what's happening. Just come to my Facebook page. Tell me that you created your first live. Better still, let me know you're going to do a live and I'll be sure and jump on and watch. So thanks again. Have a great day, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.